Before you buy the Princess Bride Adventure book game, let's take a look at what makes this game unique, what mechanics it uses, how it compares to other board games, reasons why you might not want to buy this game, and whether the game does justice to the film. This is Legendary Tactics. In 2015, I came, and it took two days before I finally found the one that I knew I needed to buy. The Princess Bride, a battle of wits. It was only when we got back to the hotel and played it for the first time that my hopes of the perfect VR in 2020, and I nervously find myself hoping that the new Princess Bride adventure book game from Ravensburger isn't the same disappointment. So before I invest in this game, I want to do my homework, look at what the underlying mechanics are, and see if this is the masterpiece that I've been waiting for. So what's new in the game? Right out of the box, it's clear that this game has a unique approach to the game board. Most games rely on a single large board in the center of the table, or a puzzle style board that you construct as it goes, or individual game boards or tableaus for each of the players. But this game, it builds six different maps into the storyboard. Each one is played in order and can be completed in 15 minutes. And every board has a different setup and a different set of rules in the storybook. The game is designed as if it's actually six different games. Let's shift to the mechanics and gameplay. If we take a close look at the underlying game mechanics, we see it's a cooperative game. Everyone can control multiple characters. There's one to four players involved. The primary mechanic is to work through six different chapters using a story deck. And the game also uses a special deck and a plot deck. Different chapters use different characters. And players on their turn perform five actions, plus you get additional actions specific to each scenario in, in order that you have to use them on your turn. Essentially, this game is a hand management game that is heavily dependent on how you decide to use your cards and getting the right combination of cards in your hand. To complete each chapter, you need to use an optimal sequence to get the job done before time runs out. And to beat a level, players must complete challenge. The deck is empty, the chapter has been interrupted by the boy. And overall, the rules are very accessible. It's a very low complexity game. And I love that you learn more about the gameplay as the game progresses. The rules are right there on the board. And there's lots of variety in the types of challenges you complete. Let's look at how this game compares to other games. I'm reminded instantly when it's a narrative game of the Tales of Arabian Nights from 2009. That's a completely narrative driven game with a 300 page book included, tons and tons of story flavor. And like an RPG, you develop your skills and work towards one of the 2600 different outcomes. So that game is, is quite a bit different from this one in that it's much more heavily driven by that, that storybook. Dead of Winter is another one that comes to mind. It's a zombie game that's less about the stabbing and killing and more about a cooperative narrative with a traitor mechanic. This game doesn't involve that same sort of traitor mechanic, but what shines in Dead of Winter is the crossroads mechanic where you get to make real moral choices. We don't really see that in the Princess Bride game. Also coming to mind is Betrayal at House on the High Hill, a cooperative game, again with a traitor mechanic. And based on the story that unfolds, it's a horror themed game, so it's actually quite different. I am reminded though of Once Upon a Time, which is based completely on telling the story, and it features various tropes and archetypes of fairy, fairy tales, you'll see the same in this game, and the narrative evolves as you play. It's partially cooperative, but ultimately only one player can win. When I first saw the chapter one map, I couldn't help but make aesthetic connections with Root. However, this game is very different. It's not asymmetrical. And the fact that the game changes dramatically from chapter to chapter also has echoes of the game time stories to me that you use um, the same basic set of rules, but then apply it into different scenarios. We need to consider possible downsides of this game, and it, it is just freshly out, so no one has played this game a lot now, and that is my one concern, is that the game um, may be a one or two play type of game. Once you've played the story through, it may feel pointless to go back and redo it. Though, if it's anything like the movie, I could watch that movie a hundred times. I probably have watched a thousand already, so let's hope the game offers the same freshness with each play, but we won't really know until we get playing it a lot. The game is very simple and it's fast. And for you, this may not be a downside if that's the kind of game you go for. If you're looking for a really, really meaty game with high complexity, you might want to take a pass on this one. There's not a ton of strategic depth here. Watch out for the leader bully in this game. Like Pandemic, there is an opportunity for one player to take over and just rule the roost. So, But that's less about the game and more about the players. And one mild annoyance that you might actually find endearing if you're a fan of the movie is having players screaming, Inconceivable! at every turn. 
Let's end with the theme. The theme is the main reason that you would buy this game. It's family friendly, it mirrors the order of the film, it feels as if you're moving through a complete narrative, and is a little like a video game because you need to beat one level to get to the next. And I love how that ties in thematically with the boy playing the video game. It ties in beautifully and chronologically with the film, and even uses the split narrative with the storyteller and the fairy tale spliced neatly together. To help our views spike, consider giving us a like. No more rhymes now, I mean it! Anybody want to pin it? Hopefully I don't need to offer a bribe just to get you to subscribe. As you wish. Thanks for your time.